So as we talked about yesterday on the platform, Patrick Beverly has been spending some time in ESPN, and boy, he's got some things to say specifically about Chris Paul. I mean, he's talking that talk. Check out my video yesterday for more of a breakdown on it, what he said. We'll play a little bit of it at the end of this video. Pretty much he said Chris Paul is not a goat on offense and doesn't play defense at all. He said he can't guard anybody in the league. Everybody knows that. As the, the Suns lost to the Mavs in seven games, he said uh, Chris Paul is like a cone. He said the Suns should have benched Chris Paul in that series. He said a lot of stuff, and it has clearly not rubbed NBA circles well. I think I saw Kevin Durant say something about Patrick Beverly's recent swing over there at ESPN. But I want to focus on a couple things that Damian Lillard, Portland Trailblazers point guard and former player Matt Barnes, who now works with ESPN, I believe he's worked for hire. They had some things to say about Pat Bev. They are not fans of his recent media run here. Dame said, bro, on TV, acting like his word is lost, speaking on private combos and praying on and people's downfall. That's weird behavior. And I ain't even got a horse in the rate. What did Chris Paul do to you, said Dame. And Matt Barnes was a little more vocal than Damian Lillard. He doubled down on his sentiments, though, and said it a little more direct. By the way, I don't believe NBA Today – is which is where Matt Barnes was on. I don't believe it's shot at the same studio where Pat Bev is at, so I don't think they're at the same ESPN location. Because Matt Barnes went on M NBA Today and said some things. He said, Chris Paul obviously is going to get a lot of blame. As Chris knows, he didn't play well from games three through seven. He played terrible. And he'd tell you that. But what I want to touch on real quick is the disrespect I saw from Patrick Beverly earlier. As reporters and part of the media, we have a job to be critical. But I think there's a thin line between being critical and disrespecting. And what Pat Bev did to Chris Paul and said was completely disrespectful and out of line. And Pat Beverly's talking like he's that guy. You are not that guy. Chris Paul played terrible this series, and his numbers are still better than your career numbers have ever been. So I just think you have to understand he's a 12-time All-Star. He played terrible. He's been All-Defense nine times, though. Seven times first-team All-Defense, and he's, he will be a Hall of Famer. Pat Bev and I are similar players. We're role players. They don't think about us when we go. Uh, they're going to talk about CP3 when he's done. And I just think the disrespect we saw today on ESPN shows, he needs to be checked because he's way out of pocket. All he needed was the red clown nose because he was out there talking like a clown. And I just think, uh, to me, again, Chris Paul is a legend in his game. Matt Barnes said, me and you, Pat Bev, we're role players. So, you should have some respect for guys. He did uh, play terrible, and he'd be the first one to tell you that. But the shots that Pat Bev took at Chris Paul were just out of pocket. I know no one else is going to tell him that, so I'm going to tell him that. All Pat Bev needed was the red clown nose today. Woo, some very harsh words from Matt Barnes following Pat Bev's harsh words to Chris Paul. Yeah, clearly there's some there between Pat Bev and Chris Paul. I mean, he pushed the dude in the back. And I think that's what, to me, gives me the, the wrong impression of what Pat Bev had to say. Like, come on, Pat Bev. Out of anybody you could pick on, I would have understood if you, you, you went at Russell Westbrook. Russ is the one that's came for your credibility. He's the one that's kind of called you a fluke. I would understand if Pat Bev went on ESPN's program or wherever and said, yo, Russell Westbrook is a fluke. I believe... A lot of players would have just kind of swallowed their, their, their spit. I don't think guys would have said much at all because I do believe around the league, guys believe some of Russell Westbrook, though he plays very hard, very, very hard, one of the hardest players of all time, him and Giannis, I believe guys look at Russell Westbrook and think some of his stuff is fluky. I do believe that. I don't believe Pat Bell would be getting any type of backlash for the most part if he said those same comments he said about Chris, about Russ. It felt like what he said about Chris – was really things he you would say about Russ right now, right? Overrated on defense, selfish on offense, can't guard anybody. That's what I feel, at least. But he went at Chris like he has never been that guy. Chris Paul is a legend. He's my favorite point guard of all time. And like Matt B said, he played bad in this series. But to kill him like he's never been that guy, that's harsh, bro. He's literally changed the Phoenix Suns organization. The Thunder literally had to trade Chris Paul because he was about to make them too good. That team had no business in the playoffs, hence what the, the Thunder have been since Chris Paul left after his one season there. They made the playoffs with Chris. They're not in the playoffs now. 
And it's pretty much the same team. Hell, they've got more talent now than they did when Chris was there, and they ain't making the playoffs right now. Pat Bev went hard at Chris Paul, and it clearly rubbed current and former players the wrong way. Speaking of what Pat Bev said to Chris, I want to end this video by playing you guys something that I said earlier, hence the same close, because I do believe I know why Pat Bev said the things he did about Chris Paul. I think Chris Paul was just a symbol of the bigger picture for, for Pat Bev. Here's what I had to say earlier. Check it out. Pat Beverly is trying out for a media career right now. And I believe what has happened is Pat Bev, number one, he, remember, he just got out of a grueling six-game series with the Memphis Grizzlies and his T-Wolves lost. Okay, Pat Bev is looking on the other side of the court, and the brother just got a $12 million extension from the T-Wolves. Keep that in mind. He, he's looking, though, on the other side of the court and realizing, oh, my goodness. You know, this guy that, that Memphis got, his, you know, this John Morant guy, he like, like floats in the air. And he's only 22. And I got to guard that for the next five or six years? Like, like I got to guard that. So maybe Pat Bev doesn't think anything about Chris Paul. But I'm sure John Morant's got his respect. They just went at it for six games. He's looking around thinking like, wait a minute now. Huh. I'm going to have to guard that and Desmond Bain. And that's just Memphis. Like, Memphis didn't even get past the second round. Like, like I'm, he, he, you know, I've heard him say that, yo, Steph Curry keeps him up at night. You know, Steph's still there, and the way Steph Curry has transformed his body over the last few years, he's getting injured less and less in his 30s. He doesn't play above the rim. You might have to deal with that a few more years to come. Um, there are other fantastic talents that are young. I mean, Pat Bev's got one of the young talents in Anthony Edwards, right? Like, he understands this league is getting nothing but better, and he's now in his 30s, if I'm not mistaken. He's looking around like, wait, I'm going to have to deal with that. Let me think about my post-playing career. And then I think there's a second thing. And I want you guys to realize what's going on here. Draymond Green is changing the NBA media landscape right now. Y'all, I, I talked about this on the other day. Draymond Green is shooting a podcast, win or lose, in the playoffs right now. We've never seen anything like that. Like, he, like the game that the Grizzlies beat, um, the, the Warriors, that was game five in Memphis. They, the, the Grizzlies beat up on Golden State by as many as 55. Draymond got immediately on that pod after. And Memphis, he got on that pod. He's going to pod. Dude, dude is committed to podding. He's, he's shooting that podcast win or lose. Even at their lowest, which is a 55-point grubbing, he's still podcasting. And I believe if the Warriors go down, let's say they get swept by Dallas. I believe Draymond Green is going to podcast every single loss and then podcast if the Mavs get to the finals. He's not stopping the podcast. He's got a deal over there with Colin Coward and the volume for YouTube. And then if you think about it from this standpoint, he's already got a deal with inside the NBA. Matter of fact, matter of fact, if the Warriors would have lost last round to Memphis, I'd bet my last dollar that Draymond Green after losing, would have ended up in Memphis for game one. Think about that, right? Because he's got to deal with it inside the NBA. They're obviously not going to do a lot while he's playing. But if the Warriors would have lost to Memphis, and let's say Dallas still won, they beat Golden State, uh, they beat Phoenix like they did, game one would be in Memphis. Uh, I'm pretty confident in what I'm saying. He would have been in Memphis because inside the NBA is going on the road for the Western Conference Finals. He would have been in Memphis. <laughs> he would have he transitioned that quit and shooting podcasts, by the way, afterwards. He would have been working for inside the NBA and doing pods against a team that just beat him. He ain't stopping the pod, and that's changing the game. Look around, y'all, ladies and gentlemen. This is stuff that I care about because I'm in the content creation game, and I'm about to get a bag in my 30s. I'm 28 right now. I'm about, they about to pay you, boy. Amazon just paid Kirk Herbstreet, big-time dollar, for him to be pretty much a co-analyst. He still works for the ESPN. He's getting a bag at Amazon. I think they're working out some with Pat McAfee behind the scenes as well. Um, look around. Like, uh, we could we play this game. Fox, FS1 just gave Tom Brady more money than he ever made playing. Like $370 million. We're in the content game now. Like, there are so many networks. I believe the Netflix and the Hulus are going to get into the content game 
really soon. Content is key now. This is a content world. People got these in their hands. They got them headphones. They got these in their ears when they're working out. People want to hear stuff. People want content. They want to listen to things. They want to listen to the people that they like. We live in a world where people want to hear people that reaffirm the things that they believe. That's the reality of it. And if you find those people, if you like their content, you like how they do it about 75% of what they say, you're going to listen to them when you're working out. You're going to listen to them when you need a getaway from your, 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 your man or your woman, right? When you're, on your, when you're on a vacation, you want to relax, listen to a good podcast. You want to talk sports with your guys. You want to have people that give you good points to bring the sports conversations in the barbershop. We're in a different era nowadays, y'all. People ain't just sitting down watching TV. They listen to podcasts. People on the road listen to pod on road trips on the, in the air. Like, this is the world we live in. Content ain't going nowhere. These networks know it. And I think what Pat Bev is doing this week at ESPN, he's trying out. Now, maybe it's not just for ESPN. He's seeing what J.J. Reddick's doing over there at ESPN. Pat Bev has said, hmm, I see where the league is going. The job Morant of the world are fantastic young talents. And by the way, there's a couple young studs coming in from this draft. I ain't them. Like, let me go ahead and go on here and make some noise for a couple days while I'm at ESPN. This Chris Paul Fresh off his game seven loss, which I thought was kind of low, by the way. I thought it was a little low the way he did CP3. Let me go ahead and diss him. Let me go ahead and, and, and talk bad about him and, and, and let people know I still don't like him. I pushed him in the back, and I still don't like him. And say he can't play defense and go hard on him, Jason Taylor, whatever. I'm letting these networks know you might not like me, but I'm ratings. And I, if you look at some of the guys that ESPN has hired, you could definitely see them hiring Patrick Beverly. He's, he's controversial. He's professional still. He is a guy that I could see one of these networks giving a nice check to. This is going to become the norm. People are going to, athletes specifically, are going to give it up on podcasts when they go on these shows. Ryan Clark started this. I used to work at ESPN with Ryan Clark. He kind of started this. He was still a Pittsburgh Steeler, and he was going doing uh, shots with ESPN in Bristol. I'm telling y'all, man. This will be the new norm for athletes. Athletes feel like their voices have been marginalized. A lot of these athletes put a lot into their bodies to get on the court, on the field. Nobody loves it more than they do. Like, they, like and the athletes that love it, they want to talk about it. They, they, they're tired of talking about sports in locker rooms with athletes that don't love it the way that they know fans love it, right? That's what it's come. Draymond is doing a lot of this stuff because he's in love with his job. He knows he's blessed. Like, I ain't mad at Draymond for what he's doing. I don't like doing it after losses. I think that's a little ridiculous. But Draymond knows, like, yo, I love this. I might got a couple young guys in my locker room that don't understand how blessed we are. I want to talk about this. There's money out here if I'm able to talk about this, win or lose. People will respect if I get out there on my pod and talk, win or lose. So there's money in this. Athletes understand it. And the ones that love what they do, they're passionate about it. And if they can make more money, like double the money that they've made as a professional player, which it, it will be out there, they're going to do it. 